The fact that you have even considered helping an infertile couple to start a family puts you in a very elite class of women, someone who goes above and beyond to help others. There is a huge number of amazing people in the world who want nothing more than to be able to hold a child of their own and really create that family they've always dreamed of. We want to be a resource of information for you. And the purpose of this video is to educate women about the power of surrogacy and their potential to help out someone in need. I am gonna talk about the good and the bad of being a surrogate and go over a lot of details and really cover a great deal of information so you can decide for yourself if being a surrogate would be a rewarding experience for you. I truly believe that it requires a very special type of woman to become a surrogate and our goal is to make sure that each of our surrogates are matched with a family and an in vitro fertilization center, which is also known as an IVF center, that will treat her with the respect and care that she truly deserves. Over the next 30 minutes, I am going to explain the rewards of being a surrogate, the compensation for carrying a baby for a family, who needs to hire a surrogate, the type of surrogacy available, who would make a good surrogate. I'll talk about the relationship between a surrogate and the intended parents. I'll go over how the process works, including the legal aspect, the medications that are required, as well as the in vitro process. And of course, how to get started and how to get more information. Let's start with talking about some of the rewards. For many women, surrogacy is a way to earn additional income to maybe stay at home and with her own children, or perhaps pay off credit card debt or student loans, maybe take that long-awaited family vacation, or even put a down payment on a house. But besides those obvious financial rewards, our surrogates have expressed a reward that goes far and above any type of monetary benefits. In fact, they usually find that the emotional rewards to be much greater and deeper than they'd ever imagined. I have repeatedly heard comments about how much they just truly love being pregnant and that surrogacy has filled a void that was somehow missing in their life. And that just the pure satisfaction of really making a difference, of knowing how rewarding it is to be a mom and then being able to give that gift to someone else. Compensation for surrogacy can vary widely due to many factors. First-time surrogates can expect to receive compensation in the range of about $32,000 to $55,000 or more, which is typically broken down into a base fee plus additional money for expenses, which could include things like maternity clothing, monthly allowance, fees for any invasive procedures for multiple babies, housekeeping allowance, lost wages, and more. Experienced surrogates can expect uh, an even higher compensation. In fact, many surrogate mothers have found that the rewards are, of being a surrogate are so fulfilling that they're eager to do it again, and many have referred to it as being addictive. So keep in mind that if you do become a surrogate mother and you do decide to do it again, as many of our surrogates have, you'll earn an even higher compensation the next time around. Compensation is generally paid monthly throughout the pregnancy with the final balance being paid after the baby is born. And don't worry, the exact details will all be outlined in your contract. And of course, all of your expenses are paid, including any required travel. People need surrogates for various reasons. The love of a child is the greatest gift in the world and it is heartbreaking to know that some people are deprived of this gift. Every single couple has their own story. Quite often they faced years of repeated disappointment of trying to get pregnant and never conceiving or going through expensive IVF cycles with no success. There are also women who could, would be able to conceive, but due to medical reasons, they're not able to maintain a pregnancy or it might risk their lives to be pregnant. There's conditions such as immune disorders, blood conditions, or even certain types of cancer survivors who face that discouraging fact that they cannot naturally become moms. Another type of person needing the help of a surrogate is the woman who put off starting her family to pursue her career. Now she might be successful and accomplished and she's reached her goals and now she's ready to start her family. And then she is faced with the reality that she either can't conceive or she's not able to carry a child. 
And regardless of her previous accomplishments, she might feel some feelings of regret or she might even feel ineffective. Same-sex couples are also in need of a surrogate, especially with the growing social acceptance of same-sex marriage. Many want, women actually really want to help these couples become dads as an act of justice and equality. And finally, there are single men out there who are eager to become dads and they need the help of a surrogate to make that possible. Now, usually we'll hear that they just haven't found that perfect someone to spend their life with, but they also don't want to wait any longer to start their family. And as a surrogate, it is very important that you're matched with the right type of intended parent. Make sure that you're open and honest about the type of person or situation that you would like to work with. There are two types of surrogacy, gestational and traditional. A gestational surrogate is not genetically related to the baby in any way. The egg is either from the intended mother or from the egg donor, and the sperm is either from the intended father or a sperm donor. The egg is then fertilized by the sperm in the IVF lab, and the resulting embryos are then transferred to the surrogate who carries and gives birth to the child. Traditional surrogacy is where the surrogate mother is artificially inseminated with the seam of either the prospective father or sperm donor. And that means obviously she would become pregnant with her own eggs and she obviously would be genetically related to the child. And then she carries and gives birth to the baby. Traditional surrogacy is usually avoided because the laws are not protective enough for the intended parents or for the surrogate. Are you wondering if you would be a good surrogate? Above all, we are seeking women who have a sincere desire to help intended parents realize their goal of becoming parents. Some of the qualities that we're looking for are women who are physically and mentally healthy between the ages of 21 and 38, and it could be a little older if you've had a recent delivery. Women who live in a stable home environment with a reasonably healthy height and weight proportion no criminal background, not receiving financial assistance from the government. Now, there are some possible exceptions to this, so if in doubt, just talk to us about it. Women who've had at least one healthy pregnancy and birth, who will be comfortable taking medication to prepare for the and maintain the pregnancy. They must be a non-smoker without consistent exposure to secondhand smoke, willing to abstain from alcohol, drugs, and make other lifestyle modifications as requested. And of course, if you're in a relationship, your spouse or partner must be supportive of your decision. The relationship you develop with the intended parents will often be the most rewarding aspect of the process. And with any good relationship, when bo both parties communicate and contribute with kind, honest, and genuine efforts, the quality of the relationship will grow and evolve over time. Every single match is individual and will develop naturally. Depending on if the intended parents are local or not will play a big role in how you communicate with them. Skype and email will be a great tool when working with an international couple, or if they're local, you might find yourself chatting on the phone or even meeting for lunch on occasion. The intended parents will often also want to attend some of your appointments with you if you're okay with it and if it's even possible for them because obviously those international parents are gonna be limited with that type of participation. Then of course, there are some intended parents who would rather have a more hands-off approach with minimal involvement or communication. And fortunately, there's some surrogates out there who would prefer this type of relationship as well. So above all, it's important to think about the type of relationship you would like to have with the intended parents ahead of time and that way we're able to make the most appropriate match and, and it's the most rewarding for everybody. There are basically seven steps to the process. Getting started, the screening process, matching you with the perfect intended parents, preparing you for fertility treatment, getting pregnant, the pregnancy and the delivery, and what life is like after the pregnancy and the surrogacy. Now, a lot of what I'm about to share with you is gonna make sense, and some of it may not. I know there is a lot of information to cover and it's going to feel overwhelming, but keep in mind that every step in the process is there for a reason. 
Right now, the news is full of sad reports of surrogacy stories that have gone wrong. So all of these steps and all of these precautions I'm about to talk about are in place for a reason and for everybody's protection, the intended parents, the surrogate, and even the baby. And keep in mind that if you do hear a negative report on the news, it's usually in a region where surrogacy is either illegal in the first place, or there's just massively inadequate laws who pr protecting the parties, or there's no regulation of the process, or possibly there was never clear terms thought out in advance. But regardless of that, for every single negative report that you hear, there are thousands of amazing ones that go unmentioned. So it's really a wonderful process and medical technology and the advancement has just made having a family possible for so many families out there. So if after watching this video, you would like to get more information and find out if you'll be a good surrogate, all you need to do is click on the button below, complete our quick intake form, and a surrogate coordinator will review your information and contact you to answer any questions and get to know you a little better. If it appears that you be a good match, you'll be asked to complete an application package. Now the application package might feel a bit overwhelming because it goes into a lot of details and asks a lot of questions. But just keep in mind that this is an important part of the process and it's a huge help in making sure you get matched with the right parents. It's also important that you complete the application and return it as soon as possible so the screening process can begin. There are typically four steps involved in the screening process. Medical records, a home visit, a psychological evaluation, and a background check. It's important to obtain copies of your OB medical records from your previous pregnancies, so you will be asked to sign a medical release form as well as provide the names and contact information for your previous obstetricians so the records can be requested. The home visit is this step in the process is, is very simple. Someone, a representative just comes out to your house and visits with you and your family. And don't worry, you will not be eliminated because you don't have a beautiful or a spotless home. The home visit is conducted to be able to meet your entire family, ensure that you live in a clean and safe environment, and also give everybody the opportunity to ask further questions. Perfection is definitely not required. If it was, no one would qualify, so don't stress about the home visit. The psychological evaluation, the purpose of this is just to ensure that you as a surrogate fully understand the emotional aspect of surrogacy. And it's also an opportunity to give you and your partner a chance to discuss things like your decision to become a surrogate, your current support system, any stresses in your life, your partner's feelings about it, and also your ability to navigate the relationship with the parents-to-be. As an added precaution, background checks are done both on the surrogate and the surrogate's partner or spouse. Now, this is very similar to the type of background check done when applying for employment. And for everybody's sense of comfort, a background check is also done on the intended parents. Once these steps are completed, you're ready to be matched. Most surrogates will be matched within about two to four months, but the process can be as quick as a couple weeks. Factors to, that are taken into consideration include your willingness to travel, your willingness to carry twins, the type of intended parents you would like to work with, as well as individual feelings about critical de decisions such as selective reduction or genetic testing. And addressing as many of these possibilities ahead of time will prevent the frustration and misunderstandings in that rare and unlikely event that there's problems during the pregnancy. And keep in mind that the more flexible you are with any of these choices, the quicker you'll be matched. However, with that being said, make sure you don't compromise on values that are very important to you. The matching process begins when your profile is presented to potential intended parents. And once that potential match is made, a phone conference between you and the intended parents is typically scheduled. And this is an important and kind of a fun part of the process because it's the first opportunity you get to talk to the person or the couple that you carry a baby for. And it's a nice opportunity for all the parties to get to know each other 
and to really make sure it's the right fit for everybody involved. And if it is a good fit, at that point, legal, legal paperwork is drawn up and a personal meeting between the parties is also generally a part of the process. Now this might happen right away if everybody's local or it might not happen until the birth if the parents are international. But keep in mind, even with international parents, there is often considerable communication through Skype and email. Before fertility treatment begins, you'll need to undergo a medical screening, sign legal contracts, and then start your medications. The medical screening is just to ensure that you're physically capable of undergoing the surrogacy process. There is no cost to you for this screening, basically. You'll schedule an initial appointment with the doctor chosen by the intended parents and a full medical evaluation will be done. And this is usually includes a full physical, an ultrasound, an infectious disease screening, drug and nicotine screening, and any other testing that will determine your ability to carry the pregnancy. And keep in mind your sexual partner will also need to be screened for sexually transmitted diseases as well. Once all of the results come back from the screening, the doctor will determine if you're medically eligible to go forward with the process. And once you pass that step, legal contracts are drawn up. Your surrogacy coordinator will refer you to an attorney with expertise in third-party reproduction. And that attorney is going to go over the entire contract with you in great detail. This document will explain all of your rights, all of your obligations, your compensation, every aspect of what you have already agreed to uh, for this surrogacy. And if you're married or living with a partner, that person will also need to sign this document as well. And of course, keep in mind, your legal fees will be paid for by the intended parents. Getting pregnant by in vitro fertilization is obviously quite different than doing it the natural way. Each IVF center will have its own protocol on the type of medications used to stimulate your body so that it's prepared to receive the embryo. But I wanna give you an overview of what you could typically expect. A daily injectable medication called Lupron is usually prescribed. And don't worry, it sounds way worse than it is. The needle is tiny. It's a little half inch insulin type of needle. And the injection can be given either in your thigh, your lower stomach, or your upper arm. And when you're at the IVF center, a nurse or a doctor will teach you exactly how to administer this to yourself. And Lupron is not a fertility medication. Lupron like down regulates your cycle so that you do not ovulate. And it's typically given for about two to three weeks. And some IVF centers will use a different form of Lupron that's given as a one-time injection. The next medication is usually estradiol, delestrogen, or estrogen, and it's used to thicken the uterus lining, and that prepares it for the implantation process. You'll need to follow your doctor's orders, and he'll explain exactly how and when to take the medications, and you'll continue this medication even after the transfer. There are three different forms of this hormone. There's oral tablets, there's the injection, or there's an adhesive patch, but most IVF physicians use the injectable form. Some surrogates have reported that medications causing, uh, will cause hot flushes, moodiness, headaches. However, we've also found that if surrogates lead active lives, they generally have fewer complaints and some have no side effects at all. During this phase, you will also most likely be asked to have a blood test as well as an ultrasound, which will help the doctor determine the thickness of your uterus lining. And once your lining is at the appropriate thickness, you'll be required to start some form of a progesterone. And this is to assist with and also to sustain the implantation and pregnancy. Progesterone is a hormone that we normally produce in our ovaries, but in a surrogacy, the additional supplement of progesterone is essential. And it convinces the body that it's pregnant until the body starts to produce the hormone on its own. The form of progesterone may be an oil-based intramuscular injection, or it could be a vaginal suppository, depending on your physician's instructions. And you'll start this medication about a week prior to your embryo transfer, and you'll continue it for about 10 weeks after the embryo transfer. Some of the side, side effects that I've heard of include 
fatigue, breast tenderness, and even some mild uterine cramping. And these side effects are all very similar to the side effects of actually being pregnant. Now I know that the medication part of the process sounds scary and overwhelming. The IVF center will work with you and walk you through all of the details and make sure you understand and you're comfortable with every aspect of it. You will get pregnant through a process called the embryo transfer. The embryo transfer procedure will be performed about two to six days after the eggs have been retrieved and fertilized. So at the time of the transfer, that little baby could already be five or six days old. And you often get to know if it's a boy or a girl right then. Now, sometimes a frozen embryo is transferred where the egg was previously fertilized and then the healthy embryo was frozen. Usually one, sometimes two embryos are transferred, but very rarely will the doctor transfer more than two embryos. With the advancement of medical technology, the success rate is, is very high and there could be a chance of all the embryos implanting and becoming babies. And carrying triplets or more is extremely risky to the surrogate and the babies, so it's usually avoided. Sometimes there'll be several healthy embryos to choose from and sometimes there, there's only one. The IVF doctor, along with input from the intended parents, will make the best selection on which embryo actually gets transferred. And the way the transfer actually works, uh, the process starts by placing a speculum into the vagina so the cervix is visible. Then the embryo is loaded into this tiny little catheter. And the catheter is inserted through the cervical canal and guided into the uterus with the help of an ultrasound. The embryos are then placed exactly where the doctor feels the best implantation spot is. And then the catheter is withdrawn and the entire process feels very similar to a pap smear and only takes a few minutes. After the embryo transfer procedure, you'll be placed on doctor ordered bed rest from anywhere from 24 to 72 hours, depending on the IVF center's protocol. About 12 days following the embryo transfer, you'll be asked to go to a local lab or back to the physician's office for a blood test to determine if you are indeed pregnant. I have to admit, a lot of women cannot wait that long and they find themselves at the drugstore <laughs> buying a pregnancy test and doing a home test. And yes, the right brand of home pregnancy tests could show positive in just a few days after the transfer. However, I wanna give you a word of caution. If you choose to go this route and cheat and take a home pregnancy test, please do not share the results with the parents. They have so much emotion and hope riding on this process, it would be devastating to share false results with them. Wait until you hear from the doctor officially, and then if it's positive, you can celebrate with them all you want. And keep in mind, if the first embryo transfer doesn't produce a successful pregnancy, the medications and the transfer process may be repeated a second, and sometimes even a third time. They say every pregnancy is different, and a pregnancy as a surrogate is surely unlike any pregnancy you've had with your own children. A whole team of people help make this pregnancy possible. The medical staff at the fertility clinic, attorneys, psychologists, your support network, the parents-to-be, and of course you. That means a lot of emotions are present. Now mostly, there's happiness and excitement, but you should also be prepared for other feelings. For example, some mothers-to-be who have had multiple miscarriages, they might associate your positive pregnancy test with just the beginning of a time for worry. Some surrogates have said they feel this enormous sense of responsibility as if so much is riding on their every move. And many surrogates enjoy the opportunity of being pregnant, knowing that they don't have to raise the baby after it's born. And, and then some surrogates wonder if it's gonna be difficult to give up the baby once it's born. And yes, there is definitely a type of attachment that takes place while you're pregnant, but you go into the process knowing the entire time that the baby is not yours and you're providing a safe and healthy place for it to grow up. A lot of the feelings of attachment are actually a sense of responsibility and your focus the entire time is on the goal of being able to hand over a vibrant, healthy little baby to the excited parents. And also the feeling of being able to do that is very powerful. Honestly, the relationship with the intended parents is often what's missed the most. 
Throughout the pregnancy, you'll also obviously attend all your regular doctor's appointments. Now you'll begin with the appointments at the fertility specialist and then generally right about 10 to 12 weeks, they'll transfer you from the fertility specialist care to your regular OB for your regular maternity appointments. And, and at that point, your obstetrician will treat you just like a traditional pregnancy. And of course, you wanna to continue to live a healthy lifestyle both for you and the baby. And then the day everybody's been waiting for, D-Day. The intended parents are almost always present at the time of birth and they'll either be in the room with you or anxiously waiting nearby. And a lot of that is up to you if you want them in the room or not. And then they will happily take their newborn into their arms and you can enjoy the feeling of being the hero of the day and having just provided an incredible gift that the new parents will be forever grateful for. At this point, you've been the center of attention for the parents-to-be for the last nine months, but now they're turning their focus to their little baby, and the relationship between you, the parents, and the child certainly changes after delivery. Recovering from the delivery and looking ahead will be your focus, and I'm sure your own family will likely be very eager to have you back into the norm of family life. Every single surrogacy match is different, Sometimes the two families become very close and they stay close, or you might just receive occasional updates about the child. Other times, each party goes their separate ways, always cherishing the chapter in the book they shared creating that little boy or girl. But whatever life is like after delivery, I'm sure you'll never forget the magnitude of the gift you've given, and maybe you'll even return to be a surrogate again. The gift a surrogate gives is often beyond measure, and there is nothing more satisfying than when you deliver a beautiful, healthy baby and you place that baby in the arms of the waiting parents. So if what you've heard over the last 20 minutes has stirred some emotion and opened your eyes to the possibilities, I strongly urge you to get more information and see if surrogacy is a good fit for you. There is obviously no obligation. This is simply an opportunity to get all your questions answered so you can be fully informed. Simply click on the button on the bottom of this page and complete the intake form. A surrogacy coordinator will review your information and contact you to answer questions and get to know you better. If it appears that you'd be a good match and you would like to move forward with the process, you'll be asked to complete an application package and submit photos. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the application package might feel overwhelming, but don't underestimate its importance. It will be a huge help in making sure you're matched with the right parents. Once you receive the application, it is really important that you complete it and return it as quickly as possible so the process can begin. We want to be a resource of information for you. I encourage you to follow us on Facebook where we have a community of women and continuously post news updates and advice for surrogate mothers. And please remember that every surrogate, every intended parent, and every case and situation is different. I wanted the information in this video to give you a good overview of the process. I hope you found this information to be valuable and I urge you to click on the button on this page and get more information. We truly look forward to speaking with you and please share this video with anyone else who is interested in learning more about the surrogacy process.